What's up guys? Here James Day here and today what we're gonna be doing is going over one of the most important types of wave management, which is freezing your lane. So our next sub goal is 2,500 subs and make sure to like and subscribe for more videos and if y'all have any other guides that y'all want me to make, just make sure to comment them down below. Okay, so now freezing your lane. The first thing we're gonna talk about is why you would want to freeze your lane. So there's multiple reasons why somebody would freeze a wave but most people do it to try and get a CS lead over your opponent, or to try and make the enemy overextend so you could try and get an easy kill. The, the CS lead that you can get from freezing the lane will help you get more gold, which will in turn get you more items than your opponent. And you could even get a higher level advantage too, which is going to allow you to snowball and easily win your lane. So freezing your lane is normally done in the top or bot lane, but it can also be done in mid lane sometimes, and it's most effective during the early game laning phase. Normally it's the top laner freezing the wave since top laners pick heroes that are stronger in the early game, and they can easily 1v1 enemies, but other laners such as the bot and mid laner can freeze the lane with good positioning and vision control. So to freeze your wave, you first want to make sure you have some sort of advantage over the enemy, or you could just straight up beat the enemy in a 1v1, which is normally easy if you're in the top lane since bot laners are weak in the early game and you could easily trade. You could have many advantages, such as a health lead or shop advantage, or even if you just still have your flask up. To freeze a wave just means to try and keep the wave in one spot and not have a push forward or against you. You want to try and get the minion wave in a favorable spot right outside of your turret where you can easily freeze the wave at that spot and all you have to do is not attack the minions except for last hitting them and make sure that the turret is not hitting the enemy minions. Also you can force the enemy laner into a lose-lose situation when they go for a last hit since they're going to either have to choose to last hit the minion and take the damage from you or they can hit you and lose a minion last hit. And this is especially punishing whenever you freeze your wave since they're going to be so far forward since the minion wave is right outside of your turret and they're going to have to run all the way back to their turret which is going to take them a while. And you can easily get some good damage onto the enemy if they do try and last hit these minions and that's going to make it even easier for you to win your lane and win the game. So the best time to do this is when the enemy creates a large minion wave to push against you, since if the enemy makes this mistake, you can capitalize super easily since the bigger that the enemy minion wave is, the more damage that this will deal to your minions, meaning that the enemy will miss more CS. Since if the enemy has 10 minions that are all stacked up, and you just have one wave of just 4 small minions, the enemy minion wave of 10 minions will just demolish your 4 minions so quickly and then they won't be able to last hit him. And you could just position right on top of your own minions and just dare the enemy to try and get a last hit. However, you might have to kill some extra minions or two just to make sure that it doesn't push into your turret range, which would mess up your freeze. Since if the enemy minions do get killed by your turret, you don't want that and they'll mess up your freeze. Normally it's the melee minions that'll sneak up into the turret range, so you need to worry about those. But if the enemy minion wave has a large amount of ranged minions, it's still possible to try and continue this freeze. And with the huge minion wave, you can easily hold the wave right outside of your turret range for many minutes, completely denying the enemy CS by forcing them into a lose-lose situation explained before. Since once the enemy creates a huge minion wave, you know that you could do a very effective freeze since your 4 minions will do almost no damage to a big minion wave, so the enemy would have to survive for a long time trying to just get as much CS as they can with you annoying them over and over and not allowing to, them to get last hits. And as long as the enemy minion wave remains larger than your own, you could freeze the lane. However, once your minions outnumber the enemy minions, then your freeze is going to be coming to an end since now your minions will deal more damage and kill the enemy minions faster. It's the same logic as when the enemy minion wave is big, they're going to kill your minions faster. But this time, if you have more minions, they're going to kill the enemy minions faster, and then they're going to push onto the enemy's side of the map. 
So at this point, you know that your freeze is coming to an end, so you have a few options to pick from. The first one is to just let your wave slow push. To create a slow push, you don't have to do much since at the end of a freeze, you pretty much do set up a slow push for yourself. Since your wave is close to your turret on your side of the map, meaning that your minions that are spawning from the base will arrive sooner and start attacking the enemy minion wave before the enemy minions even arrive. So all you need to do is make sure your minions outnumber the enemy minions, so then your wave will slowly inch its way up to the lane. However, if you do need to clear some minions, it's best that you kill the small minions, since the small minions are the ones that deal the most amount of damage you have the least amount of health. And then if you only leave the big minions that have high health and low damage, then it'll create a huge slow push for you, since your minions will be able to stack on top of them. Since if the enemy minion has so much health, they're going to stay there for a while and not kill any of your minions. So that's your first option. Moving on to the second option, you can hard push your lane fully. So once you finish with your freeze, your minions are going to start to stack up and create a huge wave to push back towards the enemy. Which is a slow push that we just talked about. But this time what you're going to want to do is push the lane fully so that big minion wave of yours is going to go into the enemy turret and the enemy turret will start attacking it. Or else the enemy can turn it around and freeze the lane themselves. Since you allow your minions to stack up and create that huge slow push, the enemy can turn around just like how you did, since this time you have a huge minion wave pushing towards them, and they can freeze this in their lane right outside of their turret and get control over the minion wave, and they can just hold your wave right outside of their own turret, and you're going to be the one ending up losing CS for many minutes. That's why if you decide to hard push the lane fully, you want to make sure that you get your minion wave underneath the enemy turret, so then they're going to be unable to freeze it. That's also why you do not want to slow push your wave early on in the match, because then they could just freeze it and cause you to lose farm. So you only want to slow push if you want to try and rotate to the jungle, or rotate to the other side of the map, or try and get kills, or take an objective. Now, for, we're going to talk about a little bit about freezing lane and bot lane, since it's a little bit different, but most of it's the same. The small difference is that usually you can't 1v1 a top laner, since they're more powerful than you early on in the match. So what you're going to need to do is hold the minion wave in the same spot right outside of that turret range, because you could just stand inside of your turret, since bot laners are normally ranged, so you can CS and attack the enemy safely, since you're standing inside of your turret and the enemy can't do much to you, since they're attacking the minions and they're melee, so if they try and attack you, they're going to take turret shots. And this is also a good opportunity to set up a gank, since the top laner will most likely overextend to try and get their farm. But you need to make sure you get good vision control in the bushes near you, like near your healer and your bush, to make sure that the enemy doesn't have vision there, so then you can call your jungler down to go and gank the top laner and try and get an easy kill. And it's such a good gank, because the top laner will have to choose to either back off since they know that, are exp that they are exposed and that they don't have vision of those bushes around them and they can be easily caught out or they could choose to stay and set up the risk of being ganked and get killed. So next what we're going to talk about is things to be aware of whenever you're freezing your lane because there are some counters to it and one of them is if the jungler ganks you. That is one of the worst feelings ever. You're freezing your lane, the enemy has a huge mini wave, you're like, oh my gosh, I could hold this here for many minutes and make the enemy lose so much CS. And then the enemy jungler comes out and ganks you and deals so much damage or kills you. And then you have to recall and it'll end up backfiring because the enemy will have that huge minion wave and then it's going to have two people, the enemy laner and the jungler pushing that wave. And since you have to back off, there's a huge wave, you won't be able to clear it in time with two people attacking you. And this means that you're going to have to back off and then they can easily take the turret. And that's why before you decide to freeze your lane, you want to try and have vision of the enemy jungler and keep track of where he is at all times. Another thing is that you can have somebody on your team ready to rotate up for counter gank to give you aid. 
This is another reason why you need to make sure that the enemy minimap isn't too large. Since then, if you have good vision and you see an enemy rotating over to you, you're going to be able to clear out the minion wave fast enough so they can't push to try and take your turret. That's why you need to make sure that you can always, that it's not huge the minion wave, and you can always kill off a couple of minions. It's never the end of the world. Since it's better to mess up the freeze instead of dying and letting the enemy get your turret. But that's going to be about it for this video of freezing your lane. Thanks for watching. Y'all got any more guides y'all want? Make sure to comment them down below. Like and subscribe, and see you guys next time.